Hey family, it's the Mobile Home Diva and in today's video, we are going to discuss all things stoves when it comes to tiny homes. I'm standing in the casita at Tiny Homes of Atlanta in Kennesaw, Georgia. I recently toured this home and posted it on my site. I got a lot of comments. Where's the stove? Where's the oven? How do I cook? What am I supposed to do? I didn't answer those comments. Instead, I scheduled some time to come out here and show you exactly what happens in the process of purchasing a tiny home and also what do you do about the stove or oven. Adam, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and tell our people what you do? Absolutely. So I'm Adam. I'm the GM up here at Tiny Home Atlanta. Um, I've been the GM for about three months now, but uh, enjoying my time, loving the tinies, having a whole lot of customers that are, you know, doing the same, so. Very good, mm -hmm. very good. So I recently visited the site and toured a few homes. I posted the casita, and in the casita, we got a lot of questions about the stove. So the first question for you, Adam, is do all tiny homes come with a stove? Okay, so that's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, not all tiny homes come with a stove. Mm -hmm. We only offer one model that comes with the stove, and it's going to be the Hacienda. Okay. It's almost the same layout as the Casita. The only difference is going to be your washer and dryer location. Right. Um, but the only reason we don't do every model with the stove is going to be because, be because um, the zoning in Georgia is just a little bit different. Okay. You know, some counties will allow you to have them, and it differs from county to city. So this could be a county that doesn't allow them, but there could also be a city within that county that does allow them. So okay. it's a little bit complicated, but that's why we do it is that we, we work around um, the um, the city ordinances and just making sure that someone gets what they want and are able to put it in their, you know, in their on their property or in their backyard, or however they okay. want to do it. So we leave those options up so we can do those things. Very good. That's interesting. A lot of people that shop for manufactured homes know that zoning plays a big part in what kind of home you can get. Uh, what extras or additional items you can get, like the, the pitch of the roof, uh, if you can get uh, stone or brick underpinning, etc. So tiny homes are no different mm -hmm. when it comes to zoning. Mm -hmm. Now this is the casita. This one you cannot order a stove, is that correct? That's correct. So the Hacienda is going to be the only model that we offer with the stove. Um, okay. It's almost the same exactly like I said. The only difference is where the washer and dryer is located. So. Since this is almost the same layout, this okay. everything is the same. This is where the uh, the stove would be. The and it's a traditional stove, you know, uh, oven stove on top. Then you have a microwave and a vent out. So okay, mm -hmm. so instead of this counter space, you would have probably a smaller counter space and a stove, or um, just a stove. It's just gonna be just a stove. Okay. Um, here's what where your water heater is. Okay. The water heater gets moved where the dishwasher is. Oh, gotcha. Yep. Over here. Yep. Okay. So the dishwasher won't be there, but when we build a home with a stove in it, you know, obviously it's gonna be a fire hazard. Mm -hmm. Um. So what we do is we build it to HUD standards. So gotcha. there's gonna be a second exterior door, you know, a fire exit. Um, that will be located where this cabinetry is. It's going to be right around here okay. um, on this wall. But um, HUD coating is one of the strictest coatings. And depending on your zoning, um, you would have to get it built to a certain code. Um, and that HUD standard is the strictest and it will umbrella any of your local, um, any of your local coating restrictions. This yeah. one you cannot order a stove in, and, but you did explain that in the Hacienda you can. Now the Hacienda will be the next tiny home that we tour on this channel. But we wanted to share this with you so you understand why you don't see a home, a stove in these videos. My question is, you can't put a stove in here, but could I? You could, yeah. Okay. Yep, yeah, that's a good question. So what I would recommend doing um, is having it to where it's vented, okay. um, to where it's up against an exterior wall where mm -hmm. you're able to, that being said, you would have your water heater that would be in the way if you wanted to put it right here, right? Okay. So what a lot of people do is do exactly what you just asked, but what they do is instead of creating a, another area for their water heater, they do a tankless water heater, which is okay. heating stuff, heating the, the water as it comes in instead of having, you know, these are 20 gallon water heaters. Okay. I'm not a big long shower person, mm -hmm. but some people are. Right. So having Maybe that in the- like <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so, um, Having the the tankless water heater, the people that like their showers, it's a win-win. You know, they get unlimited hot water. Okay. And um, 
you know, I mean, I even run out of hot water when my girlfriend goes. And okay. I'm in a standard home, so right, I can imagine right. having sharing the home with somebody else, but that's what they do is they'll take the water heater out, create a tankless water heater. Now they've had uh, made space for their stove and now they have unlimited hot water, so. I can put my own stove in, but what if I opt to not have a stove? What are my options for cooking? So um, a lot of people like Amazon will have cooktops, like your hot, hot, um, I should say hot plate, but that's essentially what it is. Yeah. Yeah, so they'll do just a, um, a cooktop and then that would be it. I mean, or an air fryer, microwave. We also have the option to give you half cabinets right here. So you could put a microwave up. Okay. So there's, there's a lot of options in terms of making it a little bit more of a conventional home in that sense right. without having to go and get HUD standards or, you know, do different things to make sure that you're able to cook a full meal. Cause there are a lot of options out there. We are able to do that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I noticed that a lot of people were frantic when it came to not having a stove or an oven, but you have to think about it. The person interested in a tiny home is interested in reducing clutter, mm -hmm. simplifying their lives. Yep. A lot of them live more outside than inside. It's, yep, it's like a little home base. A right. lot of people are gonna be a little bit more of a minimalist type absolutely. person. That's gonna be doing it. Yeah, so absolutely. you do look a lot more grilling, air yeah. frying, mm -hmm. and finding other ways, you know, to save money, mm -hmm. have less space, and live simply. Yep, and I cook in the air fryer and the crock pot most of the time. Right. I'm busy, so I like to go put stuff in the crock Me pot, too. and that's obviously something you can easily do here, so. I have a Ninja Foodie, it does seven things. It's a pressure cooker, slow cooker, um, air fryer, it rolls, boils, it makes yogurt. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm gonna come have dinner a year. <laughs> <laughs> but I cook in that all the time. Yeah. So you have to be creative when you live in these tiny homes and think about what other ways, because also I think about ventilation. Like with mm -hmm. the stove in these homes, what do you have to, what do you have to be mindful of when it comes to ventilation? So um, a standard stove, typically a lot of people nowadays are gonna have that microwave that has a fan up under it. That fan right. will put vent out. And that's why I suggested putting that stove up against an exterior wall. Uh -huh. And that would be, you know, pretty much this would be your only option would be right here. But um, having a fan under the microwave and that fan gets um, vented out. So that would be your way of, you know, getting the, uh, like it, if I burn something, even when I'm not burning something, you'll right. have that smoke and stuff. So um, having the, the microwave with vents that's vented out to the, you know, your exterior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because look, you, don't have, you have limited space here. So who wants this house smell like fried chicken or mm -hmm. fried fish all day? Nope, not me. You know what I mean? Or smoked up because yeah. you, you doze on the couch or something. Yeah. So very good. Mm -hmm. um, what other features um, can you think of really quick? Um, you because you watch my videos. Yeah, so are there any other? Um, features about this home that you can think of that you just want to share so um, I Feel like when I watched your videos you hit a whole lot of it Well, mm -hmm. what I can do is go over um, you know What our features are in this home and then okay. you know, so um, with this home all of our windows are thermal pane We have okay. our mini split here. We have upgraded um, stainless steel appliances split? So that's going to be your heating and air unit. Okay. So I haven't experienced them firsthand, but anyone that has ever had any experience with them loves them. They're super quiet, super efficient. And then okay. in combination with the thermal pane windows, it makes it a whole lot more cost, you know, um, cost effective in the sense okay. that you're not heating a huge area. There are vented ceilings or uh, sorry, vaulted ceilings and they're mm -hmm. hundred inches from peak to uh, the floor, which I mean, it makes it feel spacious in here. Um, but this home, um, this is the one you toured. So you yeah. have the double wardrobe, you have ceiling fans, um, but you get a 20 year manufacturer warranty on your roof. Oh, you wow. get a, yeah, a 15 year manufacturer warranty on your siding. You don't and then, get that on a regular home. I know it, right? <laughs> That's exactly right. Okay. So, um, and then you get a one year um, warranty through us as a dealership. Okay. So if there's anything that was going wrong with it, I would be the person that you would talk to and I'd get it done if there is anything. And go in and transport in the home. You mm -hmm. know, when you go and you're moving a whole house down the road, mm -hmm. they did a test recently and it was a nine, it's like a 9.2 earthquake. Oh, wow. It's huge. So um, there are going to be a little things here and there. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you'll have trim popping, stuff like that, but we'll get on top of it, stay on top of it, make sure that you're as happy as can be. So so you, you move the home, some, something cracks, something breaks apart or what have you. It happened with my manufactured home. Mm -hmm. They were out in 30 days yep. to fix everything I saw. So what's your policy? So we would probably be out um, a little bit quicker than that. We had okay. someone call yesterday about their uh, their water heater, mm -hmm. and we were out there the same day. Oh, good. Yeah. Awesome. So we have a really good contractor. 
I like to make sure, like, you know, cosmetic stuff, we'll stand, we'll be there within 30 days for sure. Gotcha. Um, with water heaters, heating and air, anything that's happening like that, I make sure we are as proactive as possible. I get in touch with our contractor. Uh, they do awesome work. And um, between me and her, uh, we uh, we have a, a really good work ethic in the terms of, you know, making sure that these people are happy, that they're not sitting there without heating and air, that they're not sitting there without hot water, that, you um, know, I put myself in the customer's shoes a lot of the time. I mean, right. every time. Right. So um, I just try and expedite what service needs to be done ASAP. So we, awesome. we try and do that as much as possible. Awesome. Now, is this a tiny home, the type of tiny home that you can pick up and move? So you can, yeah. So um, we have a couple customers that have moved them themselves. Okay. Um, you just want to make sure if anything you got insurance before you start to move it. Right. Um, but uh, we have a delivery service that does it for it's a thousand dollars for within a fifty mile radius. Okay. And we're also allowed to include that in our financing. Okay. Yep. So, um, but if you were going to move it yourself, you just need a one ton truck. A typical dually is going to be okay. something that would be able to pull it. And mm -hmm. you can move it when you get ready. Mm -hmm. You just have to pull permits. Is all. So if you're going down the highway, I would look into it. I'm not too well versed on the you know what you have to pull and what permits you have to have in place to be able to move one. But right. I would just do a little bit of research so you don't you know get in trouble or you get pulled over and you're not knowing you know. Right. Yeah. So. What you're supposed to have. Yeah, very exactly. good. Well, Adam, thank you so much. This has been very informative. We appreciate you joining us today and answering all of our stove questions. I hope you guys got a lot out of this uh, little interview. If you have additional questions, make sure you put them down in the comment section below. And make sure you're subscribed so you're the first person to know when I post a video. Hope you enjoy, and we'll see you in the next video.